In our journey of love and companionship, it's crucial to seek divine guidance. A pivotal question you should pose is, what's God's message about this person in my life? This question is of utmost importance as we navigate the tumultuous waters of decisions and life choices. Often we might act hastily, leading to outcomes that don't align with God's grand design for us. So let me urge you to take a pause and sincerely ask God's counsel when faced with such a crucial decision. Now, you might wonder, have I consulted with God about my relationship? Have I sought His opinion on my partner? Divine communication is an ever-present, ongoing dialogue, discussing every facet of your existence. However, you may sometimes feel disconnected from God's signals, not because He's silent, but because your attention might be misdirected. Remember, God, in His almighty wisdom, has countless means to converse with you. You may yearn for a spoken word or a clear signal, feeling distressed when they don't materialize. However, this lack of perceived communication doesn't indicate divine silence. Instead, it could suggest that God's reaching out in a different, perhaps more subtle way. God's love for you is unwavering and profound. As a beloved child of God, your well-being is His utmost concern. His love for you is so strong that He even uses rebuke and chastisement as tools of instruction. This is clearly stated in Revelation 3, 19-20, where it reads, Those whom I dearly and tenderly love, I tell their faults and convict and convince and reprove and chasten. I discipline and instruct them. So be enthusiastic and in earnest with burning and zeal and repent, changing your mind and attitude. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Therefore, it's essential to hold on and not let go of your partner when you recognize God's signs. It may not always be as clear as you'd like, but rest assured that God is guiding you. You might not be able to hear His voice audibly, but He could be talking to you through your circumstances, your friends and family, or even your conscience. His messages could be hidden in the beauty of nature or in the challenges you face each day. When you truly lend an ear to His wisdom, much like Revelation 3.20 suggests, a divine banquet of understanding is shared. Inviting God into your heart, making space for Him at your table, permits you to fully comprehend His plan for your union. At times, the winds of conflict may blow against your relationship, stirring storms of misunderstandings or differences. Despite the turmoil, remember that the Creator, with His omnipotent view, is fully aware of your tribulations. His gentle whisper might be prompting. Number one, if you've been led to someone with immense potential, yet presently immersed in their sanctification's early challenging stages, divine guidance might be nudging you not to lose hope. But caution is key here, for we mustn't let our desires cloud our perception. As believers, we acknowledge the Bible's guidance for nurturing healthy, God-honoring relationships. Yet, aligning to these mandates requires maturity. Sanctification is a transformative journey. God gradually matures His followers through His grace, leading us toward the path of righteousness. It's often fought with trials and tribulations, particularly in its early phase. Embracing Christ in the new life He bestows, one must sever ties with their old self and their sin nature. This is a monumental struggle, for as stated in Romans 7.20, Now if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is sin living in me that does it. Even though we're new creations, the residue of our sin nature remains with us. Consider Colossians 3.1, Since then you have been raised with Christ Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God, which encourages those reborn in Christ to seek heavenly pursuits. However, in verse 5, Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. 
The same chapter reminds us of a responsibility to eliminate sinful inclinations still harbored within. The subsequent verses urge us to embody virtues granted by God through Christ, advocating for kindness, humility, patience, and above all, love, the cornerstone that harmonizes everything beautifully. In this sanctification journey, remember, growth is a process, not an event. It's gradual, filled with trials, triumphs, and tribulations. Recognizing the difference between someone stuck in sinful habits without signs of repentance and growth and someone going through the early, chaotic stages of sanctification is crucial. Therefore, if you see potential in an individual undergoing the tumultuous early stages of sanctification, it may be a sign from God to remain hopeful. Yet exercise discernment. If there is a persistent pattern of sinful behavior with little evidence of repentance or progress, that might not be a relationship to hold on to. Invoking divine wisdom is crucial in this situation. Trust in God's promises to guide you. He will shed light on whether it's a case of someone struggling through the sanctification process or simply living in unrepentant sin. Stand firm in faith, allowing God's wisdom to steer you right while fostering love and patience throughout this journey. Number two, perhaps there are times when the allure of freedom calls out to you. The promise of solitude appears comforting and the prospect of exploring potential connections elsewhere seems enticing. You find yourself caught in a complex web of emotions, yearning for a release, but struggling to find a sound reason or a gentle way to initiate the separation. It's as if an invisible force is holding you back, compelling you to reconsider, to hold on, to endure. Do these moments of confusion and indecision seem familiar? It's possible that this is not just a random tug of war of feelings. This could be God speaking to your heart, urging you not to surrender, not to let go of this person just yet. When you find it challenging to put an end to a relationship, despite your deep-seated desire to break free, it may be a divine sign. It may seem as though God is withholding the go-ahead for you to execute your exit plan. You might find yourself questioning, why do I still feel tethered to this person? Why can't I sever this bond? This invisible force, this lingering connection that makes you pause, could be God's way of telling you that he's not granted you the green light to end things. There's a reason why God might be sending you these signals, compelling you to remain patient, to hold on to love, the shared memories, the companionship, and the mutual affection. And perhaps you've tried to let go, to experience solitude, only to find peace elusive. Not because you're undeserving of happiness, but because God has a grander, more splendid plan for you. A plan beyond your current understanding or foresight. This divine intervention is profound because it serves as an emblem of God's desire for you to persevere, to hold on to this person. It's not a mere coincidence that you can't find an easy way out. It's a signal from God urging you to remain patient, to persist through the challenges, because He has a plan for the both of you. This is God's way of telling you, hold on. Don't let go of that person when you notice these signs. Number three, when the person in question who might have wronged you displays not just remorse, but a genuine and sustained repentance. In every relationship, there are moments of pain and strife some wounds so deep that it seems impossible for trust to bloom again. Yet there are also instances when a hurtful action, albeit not cataclysmic, still results in an irrevocable change in our emotions towards the other person. Now, as followers of Christ, our ethos guides us to always forgive. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ, God forgave you. Ephesians 4.32 Be it in a romantic liaison, a friendship, or a bond with a family member, forgiveness is our Christian duty. However, it's crucial to remember that in the realm of dating, forgiveness doesn't necessitate an everlasting bond. You're not obligated to continue a romantic relationship despite forgiving the person who's wronged you. 
It might sometimes be necessary to put up boundaries or end a relationship, even while bestowing forgiveness. Yet the divine tapestry of love and life is complex and unpredictable. Sometimes a person might inflict deep pain, but the Almighty could bestow upon you the grace to forgive and reconcile. Now, this reconciliation isn't merely superficial forgiveness. It's about restoring the relationship to its original state before the hurtful event occurred. And remember, such reconciliation should only be considered if there's a genuine willingness on both sides to reunite and if there's authentic repentance. This authentic repentance isn't a hollow, fleeting apology, not just a regretful text message followed by an attempt to brush the issue under the carpet. No, genuine repentance manifests as a sincere plea for forgiveness and is accompanied by tangible, consistent efforts towards amending past mistakes. So, if you find yourself in the position where you deeply care for someone who has hurt you and you perceive God granting you the grace to reconcile, coupled with the person showing you signs of sincere repentance, then it could be a divine hint that you shouldn't lose hope in the relationship. God might indeed be urging you to hold on and not let go. Embrace His wisdom, listen to His whispers, and let His divine guidance illuminate your path. Remember, relationships can be complex, and love is a beautiful challenge. But above all, it's our faith in God and His divine signs that can help us navigate these intricate paths. We all yearn to stumble upon this exceptional bond. But how can we discern when it's been divinely presented to us? How do we know if the Lord has truly chosen this one individual, this extraordinary bond for us? This bond is not about any typical connection, but rather the unique companionship God plans for us. It's about experiencing an unparalleled unity with another soul, possibly the one you're destined to walk down the aisle with someday. The question then arises, how can God communicate this to us? How can we recognize these divine signals, often hidden in the ordinary? Before we proceed, let's clarify that these signals aren't always comfortable or effortless to identify. These heavenly signs are sometimes dressed in challenges, discomfort, and uncertainty. But remember, dear friends, these uneasy moments are meant to shape and prepare you for that extraordinary bond. They are God's way of presenting your divine partner, molding your spirits to merge in His beautifully planned way. Decoding these divine signals, understanding their depth and purpose, might feel like deciphering an intricate puzzle. While every experience is unique, there are certain shared elements that might guide us in understanding God's divine plan for love. Number one, enduring love through emotional storms. Throughout the scripture, love is depicted as a journey, a commitment, not just a fleeting emotion, one key word used to represent love in the New Testament is agape, signifying an informed decision, a conscious choice to love beyond the realm of fluctuating feelings. At the core of this powerful expression of love, we find the notion of sacrificial giving, as reflected in John chapter 15, verse 13. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends amplifying that love is not about receiving but surrendering for the sake of the other. Drawing from this divine teaching, one can see that when love is genuine, it doesn't come with a switch to flip on and off, subject to emotional turmoil or shifting circumstances. Authentic love is patient and consistent. It remains constant through the spectrum of life's experiences, through times of joy and sorrow, peace and turbulence. A love that's unyielding, even in face of emotional trials, is a solid indication of true affection, a reflection of God's enduring love. Our lives are marked by peaks and valleys, and it is within this topography of the human experience that true love shows its resilient face. As in the serene spaces of happiness, love should remain steadfast even when the emotional terrain becomes challenging. The individual who truly loves you will be there through thick and thin, demonstrating that their affection isn't conditional or dependent on passing sentiments. This is beautifully encapsulated in the wisdom of Proverbs 17, 17. A friend loves at all times. The friend who loves consistently in every season of life, 
illuminates the nature of true love. This illuminating light is a sign from God, revealing the authenticity of love in your life. God presents these signs not just as mere indicators, but as confirmations of a profound love that mirrors His own. Remember, the person who truly loves you won't recede when emotional waves crash. Instead, they will stand with you, just as the Lord stands with us in our own storms. Their love is enduring and unchanging. This indeed is a divine signal that someone genuinely cherishes you. Recognize these signs, embrace them, and thank God for them. Number two, God often employs a distinct strategy to guide you towards the person destined for you. You may find yourself encountering a series of unsuccessful relationships, which could lead to self-doubt and fear about your future relationship status. It's a typical temptation to assume that perhaps you're fated to remain single. Yes, it's true that God has blessed certain individuals with the grace of a fulfilling single life. One evident sign of this calling is an absolute contentment with the state of singleness. An exemplar of this is Paul, who did not express dissatisfaction or grievances about his solitary existence. Rather, he reveled in it. Hence, his satisfaction with singleness indicated his divine calling towards it. If you're not experiencing a similar contentment, it might imply that God is gently nudging you towards the institution of marriage. However, let's keep in mind, the ultimate source of satisfaction is God Himself. Yet the scripture does not advocate denying the wholesome desires He's instilled within us, including the longing for companionship and marriage. It's a good desire, rooted in the core essence of biblical teachings. It's not uncommon to find yourself navigating through an unsettling phase filled with doubts about your future marital status. You may question, why does God make us undergo such distress? The truth is, your desire for a relationship may be an indication that God has a plan for you. Your unfulfilled relationships may not necessarily symbolize your destined singleness, but rather could be God's way of preserving you for the right person. God often uses periods of uncertainty to strengthen your faith, teaching us to trust His timing. Sometimes the reason previous relationships don't pan out is not because they couldn't, but because God has a better plan in store. A plan that includes a person who will complement you in ways you haven't imagined. Hence, your previous experiences are not indicative of failure, but are stepping stones leading you to the person God has intended for you at the perfect moment. When your heart yearns for companionship and yet previous relationships have not blossomed, it's probably God's unique way of demonstrating His plan. He is reserving you for the right person and the right moment. His signs are often subtle, embedded in our experiences and desires. So, keep faith in His plan, His timing, and most importantly, in His love for you. For when someone truly loves you, God ensures His signs guide you to them. Number three, genuine love reflects in one's readiness to forgive your missteps. God reveals His love through such individuals. Exploring the essence of love means delving into the nature of the divine, because God Himself is love, as declared in 1 John chapter 4, verse 8. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. His infinite love unfolds before us in innumerable ways, but one of the most profound displays of His divine affection is His propensity for forgiveness. Reflect upon 1 John chapter 4, verse 9, which enlightens us, saying, God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent His only Son into the world so that we might have life through Him. It lays out the blueprint of divine love. It's not just about the affection we receive, but it's about the grace and redemption God offers us. This was brought to life through the ultimate sacrifice of His Son, forging a path for forgiveness. In the same vein, an individual's genuine love for you can be discerned when they continue to love you, notwithstanding your transgressions against them. Their love stays unaltered, echoing the forgiving nature of God's love. They embody the divine principle of loving forgiveness as described in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. When we stumble, err, and falter. It is not the end of the world. Rather, it's an opportunity to experience the depth of love that person has for us, as they choose forgiveness over resentment, 
just as God forgives us for our sins. It is during these trying times that God shows his love through these individuals, demonstrating his omnipresence, forgiving and displaying an unchanging love for us. Number four, picture this, two individuals destined to be together, but their insecurities rise up like barriers, intensifying the other's fears. This isn't an accident. It's often part of God's design, nudging you towards a deeper faith and reliance on him. Imagine a man terrified of rejection, hesitant to pursue the woman he's attracted to. Now envision a woman who's equally fearful, worried about being shunned if her true self is revealed. Their insecurities are on a collision course, threatening to ignite an inferno of doubts. Sounds familiar? Let's unfold this further. When the man finally musters the courage to approach, the woman, governed by her fears, appears aloof. She puts up an icy front to shield herself from the potential pain of revealing her true self. This response stokes the man's fears of rejection, amplifying his initial insecurity. They're stuck in a loop, their insecurities feeding off each other, creating an endless cycle of fear and mistrust. Now you might be asking, why would God steer you into such turbulent waters? Why not a calm sea where insecurities don't clash? The answer lies in our faith's core principle. This divine orchestration is not a form of punishment, but an invitation to grow closer to God. When the discomfort of your insecurities becomes unbearable, it's God's way of encouraging you to seek Him as your ultimate source of security. Remember, our God is not a God of confusion, but of peace. He's building a pathway to Him through the rawness of your insecurities. As Paul encouraged us in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, I can do all things through Him who strengthens me. The journey of love is a transformative one. Yes, you may encounter roadblocks, bumps, and unexpected detours like these clashing insecurities. However, these experiences aren't meant to deter or dishearten you. There are opportunities for growth, pushing you to turn to God to find solace and security in His love. This realization could be your first sign that you're with the person God has chosen for you. When you sense that your relationship is nudging you closer to God, this is a divine sign that you're with the right person. It's God's way of showing you that this person, though they may inflame your insecurities, is meant to lead you towards finding your strength and security in God. God uses the crucible of these insecurities to reshape and fortify your faith. Number five. Honesty, unquestionable. Unadulterated honesty is one of the most profound signs of love. A person who loves you knows they've made a mistake and they're aware that their confession may anger you, but they opt for transparency nonetheless, choosing to confront the issue head on rather than bury it in the sands of silence. This, my friend, is a testament of love, a divine sign that they genuinely care for you. In another scenario, Imagine they notice you on a path that's harmful to you, a trajectory that may lead to disappointment or pain. They realize that bringing this to your attention might upset you or even push you away. However, they choose to voice their concerns anyway because your well-being is paramount to them. They put their comfort aside to protect you from harm. This, again, is an undeniable sign of true love. The connection between honesty and love can be found in the teachings of the Bible. It's not always an easy road. Often it's fraught with challenges, but it's a path we must tread for the sake of love. As we navigate the waters of dating and relationships, let's always remember these divine signs. Recognize the courage it takes for someone to be brutally honest, especially when they know it might upset you. Appreciate the strength in their character that makes them step out of their comfort zone to ensure your well-being. Cherish the love that underpins such actions, because in these actions, we see God's signs of true love. It's beautiful to consider that God is at work in our relationships, guiding us, showing us these signs of genuine love. So, as you continue on your journey of love, look out for these markers. They're not just signs of true love, they're blessings from above. The difference between the moment of your singleness and the amazing relationship with that man or woman God will give you is the process between now and then. What do I mean? I mean whether you were about to meet this person or you are already with them, but you have yet to confirm 
where the relationship is going regarding marriage. It will take both time and a series of events, some of which may not be pleasant for you, before you come into that sweet experience you've always prayed for. Remember that the Bible says in Proverbs 4, 18, that the path of the righteous is like the morning sun, shining ever brighter till the full light of day. The day begins with the sun rising, then the sun travels through the sky, and the day ends when the sun sets and darkness takes over. Similarly, from the beginning of your relationship until it becomes clear that this is the person God has ordained to be your spouse, God may allow you to go through a process both individually and together. This process will help perfect God's plan for you two and also strengthen your convictions about each other. Here are some unpleasant things that may happen when you meet the one God wants you to marry. Number 1. When you meet the one God wants you to marry, one of the unpleasant things that may happen is that you will need a lot of patience. No true relationship ever lasts without patience. A lack of patience may cause you to miss the right person even if God brings them into your life. You may have some genuine questions like, well, I like this person, and they're also strong in faith and love God. But I am not sure if this is the person for me or not. I don't just want to be led by my feelings. I don't want to be where God doesn't want me to be. What should I do? It's very important to be honest about how you feel, especially with yourself, and I believe that is why God is allowing this message to come to you today. However, it's important to know that not everyone who ends up married to the right person knew they were with the right person right away. Not everyone who ended up in a wonderful marriage saw the best in their partners when they met. On the contrary, some were subjected to the worst behaviors of their partners at the start. But over time, their impressions changed, and God confirmed that they were meant to be. The truth is that when you meet the one God wants you to be with, you will need patience and a lot of it. God may not show you everything you need to know at once, but be patient. Don't commit immediately and don't be in a hurry. As unpleasant as it may feel, especially when you are afraid that you may fall in love with this person, learn to pray and wait for the Lord to reveal His will for you too. Remember that the Bible tells us that one of the qualities of love is patience. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 Love is patient. Love is kind. It doesn't envy. It doesn't boast. It is not proud. Be patient and trust God's timing. Number 2. When you meet the one God wants you to marry, one of the unpleasant things that may happen is that you will have doubts at first and need clarity. Have you ever listened to veteran athletes share their life stories? One of the things you may hear is that when they set out to pursue their dream of becoming an athlete, there were times when they struggled with doubt. These feelings often came when they experienced difficulties and setbacks or when they observed the road ahead in comparison to where they were then. Some survived this and went on to become successful, but many did not. Some gave up and chose a different career path that left them average at best compared to where they would have been if they saw their dreams through. Also, even as Christians, you don't wake up every day feeling like a Christian. There may be times when you look at yourself and ask, did I act like a Christian back then? Did I do the right thing? Am I supposed to be here doing this as a child of God? These questions prove, one, that you are a child of God, and two, that you are conscious of your faith and about pleasing God. Similarly, when God brings you into a relationship, it's quite normal and healthy, though unpleasant, to have doubts and genuinely need clarity about God's will for your relationship. While unpleasant, having doubts about someone is very normal. It's healthy at times because it shows you're not blindly following your feelings. It shows that you want to be convinced about your relationship beyond just feelings. It's normal and even quite wise when, although you like someone, you feel there is still something about them that you need clarity on. 
And that is not something they can answer by themselves. Only God can. You shouldn't meet someone whom you barely know and then jump into marriage because you believe that they're God's will for you. That could cost you a lot. You know, oftentimes we wish that once we meet the right person, everything would just click and we could get married. But it doesn't always work like that. This is why, like I pointed out in the previous point, you need to let patience run its course until God confirms your relationship. The problem with doubt comes when you allow it to get the best of you. When you let doubt lead, even if God speaks, your doubts won't let you hear. This is unhealthy. Hence, you must be careful that, even when you are not sure if this person is from God, you are not in a hurry to act. Instead, talk to the Lord about it. Don't commit so easily. Take your time and watch while listening to the Lord. The Bible says in Proverbs 19.2, Desire without knowledge is not good. How much more will hasty feet miss the way? It may be an uncomfortable process during your journey, but in the end, it will be worth it, knowing that your relationship was not built on mere feelings, but on faith. Number three, when you meet the one God wants you to marry, one of the unpleasant things that may happen is that both of you will have to work for it. Movies and the art industry have always painted romantic relationships to involve the arrival of the right one and then a cheerful ride into the sunset, into happily ever after. Many people buy into this idea and adopt it as their own marriage expectations. Why? Because it is easy. You only need to be present and the other person will do all the work. However, this is not how real life works. You see, when you meet the one God wants you to marry, both you and the person will be required to put in the work in order for the relationship to work. One person should not be the only one to do all the calling, texting, or spending. One person shouldn't be the only one showing affection or apologizing. No, everyone must put in the work or else it won't work. Furthermore, as you two make progress together, because you're humans, you may step on each other's toes. You may sin against each other or even sin against God together. So as a way of making the relationship work, you will both need to confess your sins to each other, apologizing when you're wrong or when a wrong is pointed out and seeking forgiveness from each other. You will also both need to confess before God when the two of you sin against him together. This work includes communicating constantly, praying together, working through changes, and making healthy compromises here and there. The more the team works together, the more you will become established in your union before God as the couple He wants you to be. Amos 3.3 makes it clear why working together, no matter how unpleasant it might seem, is very important. Do two walk together unless they have agreed to do so? Number four, when you meet the one God wants you to marry, one of the unpleasant things that may happen is that you may have to work your way through some disapproval. To balance this, it's important to take heed of wise counsel when it seems that everyone in your life disapproves of your relationship with someone. If everyone in your life seems to not encourage your relationship, especially when it seems these are spiritually mature people who have been married for a long time. You should take that seriously. But with that being said, when God brings someone into your life, you should also expect that not everyone will approve of your relationship. Don't forget that some people in your life may allow the devil to work through them because he knows this relationship will give God glory in your life and he doesn't want that. He will do everything within his power to discourage you from taking that path. Often, this opposition, though not coming from everyone, may come from some of the people in your life whom you love and respect. The enemy may use their immaturity in dealing with life issues, maybe about defining people based on the amount of money they have, how they look on the outside, ethnic or racial differences, church denomination or other factors. However, as long as you keep your eyes on God and are willing to take correction and be led by the Spirit, you'll be fine. This may not be comfortable to deal with, but it will be worth it. Be patient. 
Trust God during the process and for his timing. Don't be in a hurry to jump in or out of any relationship until you are sure God is no longer in it. Have you ever found yourself questioning the divine plan, feeling as if your struggles are uniquely yours and wondering, why is this happening? Why am I the only one who has to endure this pain? Did I bring this upon myself? Let's take a journey together and imagine two travelers exploring a new land. Their destination is a place of abundant beauty, brimming with cascading waterfalls, towering trees, and fluttering butterflies. However, their path is interrupted by a chasm. The only way forward is across, but the journey is far from easy. Among the travelers, the first is overwhelmed by the paralyzing fear of heights. His companion, too, acknowledges his fear, but reacts differently. In a shocking moment, the second traveler leaps across the chasm. The first traveler calls out in disbelief, questioning his friend's bold action in the face of their shared fear. The second traveler responds, Yes, I too am frightened, but I fear a life half-lived even more. We all carry fears within us. The crucial question is, does this fear outweigh your yearning for growth? Will you let your fear prevent you from reaching your full potential? The tale of the two travelers holds a mirror to our own lives. Often we find ourselves on the edge of a figurative chasm filled with fear and uncertainty. But remember, God is with you in these moments of trials and tribulations. They're not punishments, but tests designed to prepare you for the great things that lie ahead. God's plan for you is intricate and full of purpose. There's a reason why you're here today, questioning, seeking, and growing. The experiences that leave you asking, why me, are the very ones shaping you for the divine destiny that God has prepared. The trials you face today are not meant to break you, but to build you. They are like the purifying fire that turns an ordinary piece of coal into a precious diamond. The process may be hard, but the result is a treasure of immeasurable value. So when you find yourself asking, why is this happening to me? Remember the second traveler. Fear is natural, but it shouldn't hold you back. Embrace your journey and trust that God's plan for you is greater than any fear you may have. He is preparing you for someone special, someone chosen as your spouse today. Through every trial, through every heartache, remember, you are being prepared. You're being shaped for the divine love story that God has written especially for you. So stand tall, have faith, and remember, you're not alone in your journey. God is with you, and he's preparing you for a love that mirrors his own patient, kind, and enduring. Because in the grand tapestry of life, your trials are not obstacles. They're stepping stones to your divine destiny. God is testing you because he's preparing you for someone chosen as your spouse today. So embrace your journey, have faith, and step forward into the love story God's written just for you. Life's hurdles come at us in unexpected ways leaving scars that are physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. Each trial feels unique. Each hardship seems to weigh heavier than the last. In these moments, our minds can descend into turmoil, and a sense of overwhelming helplessness can take hold. It's crucial to acknowledge that in these times of vulnerability, negative forces find fertile ground. They capitalize on our pain exploiting our moments of weakness. These forces feed on our fear, magnifying it, making it appear insurmountable. Let's be clear, it's not your fault for momentarily succumbing to apprehension or doubt in these trying moments, but it becomes detrimental if we allow ourselves to remain in this state, as it gives these negative forces a stronghold over our thoughts. As Christians, we believe that God is ever present in our lives guiding us, shaping us, and preparing us for our future. So when you're facing trials, remember this, God's not abandoning you. Instead, he's refining you, 
shaping you into the person who will be ready to meet that special someone he's chosen for you. Every test, every challenge is a stepping stone on your path towards readiness. The fear you feel, the uncertainty you wrestle with, are not roadblocks, but signposts guiding you towards your personal growth and spiritual maturity. God is using these trials to mold you into a person who will not just find a spouse, but will be ready to enter into a union that honors Him. In these moments of hardship, resist the temptation to wallow in fear. Instead, use these trials as opportunities to fortify your faith, to strengthen your trust in God's plan. Remember, the enemy seeks to use your fear to distance you from God, but God's using your trials to draw you closer to Him and through this process, prepare you for a divinely ordained union. The scripture of 1 Peter 5.8 paints a vivid picture. Be vigilant and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls about like a roaring lion, searching for someone to devour. This verse reminds us that when we immerse ourselves in worry, we unknowingly open the door for the devil to manipulate our lives. The scriptures make it clear that the adversary targets those involved in difficulties. The reason being, as we concentrate on our challenges before us, we often become oblivious to the thoughts we entertain, the words we utter, and the actions we carry out. Our minds are preoccupied, leaving our hearts vulnerable. Now, the question emerges, if God's aware that the devil seeks to exploit us during our weakest moments, why does he allow us to be in such positions? The answer lies in the following verses of 1 Peter 5.10. And after you've suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. Here we find the most candid response from the Bible. God's intention is to restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. Your present circumstances might not be ideal, but it's essential to understand that God isn't punishing you. This doesn't signify lesser love from Him or negligence on His part. The essence of hardship lies in its capacity to demonstrate His love for you. It's His way of nurturing you to reach your highest potential. As followers of Christ, we must engrave this truth in our hearts. If we fail to realize that we can most deeply experience God's love during adversity, we risk succumbing to defeat. We often find it easier to perceive God's love when our prayers are answered and our deepest desires fulfilled. But when hardship knocks, we sometimes feel unheard and alone. If you find yourself resonating with this feeling, then it's a call to deepen your understanding of God. The Bible will reaffirm His attentiveness towards you. Jeremiah 9.7, for instance, reassures us. Therefore, this is what the Lord Almighty says. See, I will refine and test them. For what else can I do because of the sin of my people? God's only expectation from us is that we mirror His steadfast love by persisting through these tribulations. And remember, these trials are not random occurrences. They're a testament that God's preparing you for something or someone special. Perhaps this testing phase is His way of molding you for a spouse He's chosen for you. After all, He is the master craftsman who's perfecting you for a divine purpose, even today. So let these trials not deter you, but instead strengthen your faith and make you more resilient. Be assured, His plans for you are filled with hope and a future. In the divine words of James 1, 2-4, we are reminded, My dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow, for when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. This verse is a powerful testament to the truth that we are seen, heard, and understood by God. When we're faced with challenges, they aren't mere stumbling blocks. They're God's way of steering us toward our rightful path. He's shaping us for a purpose, a purpose grander than our imaginations can conjure. The key here is to let go of our worries, surrender our fears, and trust in Him. For in His trust, we find ourselves in a space of abundance, fulfillment, 
and joy. A place we may not have envisioned, but is precisely where we're meant to be. In this journey of life, we're called to shoulder certain responsibilities, to experience growth and endurance. And as we navigate this path, we must remember to continually reach out to God, our ever-present guide. Jesus is not merely a presence to be acknowledged. He is a force to be reckoned with, deserving our absolute surrender. In surrender, we move beyond acceptance. We demonstrate our capacity to relinquish control, to trust in His grace, and most importantly, to express our love. This journey is not just about preparing for a life partner. It's about understanding our worth, our potential, and God's plan for us. As we prepare ourselves to meet the one God's chosen for us, let's remember that our trials, challenges, and experiences are stepping stones towards a fulfilling life. A life where we are perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. In the midst of life's trials, it can be tempting to be consumed by anxiety and worry. However, we are called to place our trust in the Lord, rather than focusing on the looming challenges. Consider how quickly life can change, how swiftly the landscape can change. Human preparation, no matter how thorough, will never be flawless. But the Lord equips us with the resilience and the ability to act and react wisely. Reflect on the story of Daniel, who found himself in the midst of a den of lions. He didn't squander his energy on creating an escape plan. Rather, he dedicated his time and spirit to prayer. Our personal hardships often resemble a den teeming with ferocious beasts. In the face of such adversaries, it's natural to feel small and powerless. However, Daniel, in his divine wisdom, understood his limitations. He didn't confront the lions but instead turned his focus towards the Almighty. When the might of God eclipses all else, why should we fixate on anything other than Him? He's always eager to hear our prayers. Our role is to voice them with sincere hearts, and in return, He'll bless us with all the provisions we need. Isaiah's words serve as a comforting reminder. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be scorched, nor will the flame burn you. Our God is a God of abundance. He lavishes us with grace and wisdom whenever we call out to Him. However, there are times when His blessings are overlooked, when His guidance goes unnoticed because we're too preoccupied. In our journey of life and love, the Divine Hand is ever ready to guide us toward becoming our highest self. The key is to be receptive, to hold space for the Divine Whispers that are always present. You see, the more we tune in to the spiritual frequencies around us, the quicker we become aware of the miraculous transformations that the Almighty is orchestrating in our lives. Have you ever marveled at the concept of blessing in disguise? What if, through heightened spiritual discernment, we could unveil these hidden blessings? Imagine the profound peace that would replace the impatience and frustration that the adversary wishes to instill in us. You see, faith, combined with action, is the recipe to navigate through the storms of life. Not every door is meant to be entered. Notice how in horror movies, the characters tend to enter rooms even though there are clear signs of the enemy waiting for them inside. I know it's fiction and just for entertainment, but even outside of the television screen, this is something that commonly happens. We are naturally adventurous and curious, and these are some of the traits that make our lives more exciting. As Christians, we know that we try not to cross the line between leading a life in Christ and conforming to the world. However, when love is included in the equation, this line becomes blurry. The bad apples in the dating scene are one of the following. Individuals who are persuaded by the devil to disguise their true intentions, or ones who cannot love you properly because they're not sent by God. Do you know what seems to be the hardest part? It's the fact that you encounter a lot of people in your daily life, but God has designated one spouse for you. There are too many options, and it's such a challenge to identify which one is the right one. What makes it even more difficult is when you've been longing for a relationship for a while now, 
and have reached the point that you are subconsciously willing to settle with someone who doesn't even meet your standards. Desperation and loneliness can cause you to see people through rose-colored glasses. It can force you to give chances to those who don't deserve your time. Have you ever dated a person and really exerted effort to make things work? How did it go? If it went successfully, then I'm glad for you. But if not, I bet you've already realized how silly it was to attempt to please this person even though they were not worthy of your love. What a waste of time and emotional investment, right? You see, the last thing God wants you to do is to be in a relationship that's not meant for you. People will invite you to take a chance on them, but not all of them can actually bring you good. Hence, just because God puts an open door along your way does not mean He wants you to walk through it. Sometimes it's a test to see if you're heeding His word seriously. So when He sees that you're feeling inclined to take part in a potentially damaging relationship, the Lord won't let you go through this. He will pull you away from this person and redirect you to the right path in His own ways. As told in Psalm chapter 100, verse 3, Know that the Lord is God. It is He who made you, and we are His. We are His people, the sheep of His pasture. He acts as our shepherd whenever we get a little lost, just like sheep. You must bear in mind that God wants you to be in the right places at the right moments, especially in the context of relationships. When you're in danger of entering a wrong relationship, you'll find ways to protect you from this. Here are three ways God does this. Number one, let's start with the most noticeable signs. It's when your loved ones do not approve of this person. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 20 states, Listen to counsel and accept discipline that you may be wise the rest of your days. We sometimes seek God's wisdom through reading the Bible or looking for signs, but we tend to overlook the fact that the people around us are instruments of God as well. The right people serve as His messengers whenever He wants to communicate something, especially when they are firm believers. Having said this, God protects you by guiding your loved ones to act on His behalf just like how He surrounds you with people who love you as much as He does. Do your family and friends like this person? A crucial part in answering this question is asking them for their honest thoughts on your relationship. Because they genuinely love you, they won't hesitate to flag concerning features of this person or your relationship in general. Most of the time, they're the ones who can protect you more than you can protect yourself because they possess clarity and objectiveness. As said in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14, where there is no guidance, the people fall, but in abundance of counselors, there is victory. The ones you trust are those who God put in your life to guard, support, and cherish you. Make use of this extraordinary blessing and seek their advice. It's important that we practice listening to godly advice at all times, whoever may be giving it. Their concern for you is one of God's many layers of protection. Number two, the second sign is when the timing is obviously wrong. When someone is about to lead you into an unhealthy relationship, one of the defining characteristics of this is the timing. It's normal to want to take it slow when you're developing a connection with someone. However, let me warn you that you may meet individuals who are just too charming and persuasive. Have you encountered the term love bombing? This refers to a form of manipulation used to win you over immediately. This often manifests in showing too much sweetness, investment, or affection in the early stages of the relationship. They'll claim that they're already in love with you despite only knowing you for a short time. With this, you may ask, isn't it too early for them to feel this way? But then you're pressured into reciprocating this feeling. Everything feels too fast for you to even process the kind of relationship you're getting into. If there's one thing you should know, it's that you should not trust a relationship that evolves too fast. Peter chapter 8, verse 9 says, But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping His promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he's patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. God has been immensely patient with us from the very beginning, 
and this is rooted in His unconditional love. Now, if you'll settle with someone who seems in a rush, don't you think that it's a telling sign of a bad relationship? The things you're observing about this person are God's subtle ways of communicating with you. When you're getting uncomfortable with the timing of your relationship, He's telling you that this is not the one for you. It also applies to timing that interferes with your growth as an individual. For example, you may be starting your career or even at the height of it, and then this person becomes a distraction. No matter how much you want to include them in your life, when the current circumstances are already too much for you, it isn't the right time to pursue a future with this person. Do yourself a favor and do not make room for people who cannot keep up with the blessed life God has given you. Number three, lastly, you will feel God's protection when their true colors keep showing. Recall your dating history. Was there ever a time where the person you were starting to fall in love with unintentionally revealed red flags? Were there moments where you realized that the two of you weren't compatible with each other even though the relationship was still young? Most of the time, it takes people a painfully long time to unmask their partner's true behavior. There are even cases where their true colors only show after getting married. But the fact that you're overwhelmed with the character of this person means that God is unveiling their darkest traits to discourage you from pursuing a relationship with them. Know that He has every right to show you the truth about who you're dating. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7, the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or at the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For God sees not as man sees, for man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. God is letting their mask fall off so that you can see the kind of person you're dealing with. The things you see in them are only on the surface. They may give you gifts and shower you with sweetness, but you can never really know their true intentions. However, God has full access to our hearts. The moment He sees that the heart of this person is clouded with malice, He will prepare you to walk away. Did you know that when the book of Judges introduced Samson's feelings for Delilah, her very first line was a question about Samson's secret and how he could be tied up? Now, Samson failed to recognize that God was foreshadowing the exploitative nature of his relationship with Delilah. He was so blinded by love that he repeatedly ignored the upfront warnings from God. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 21 reads, And your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, This is the way, walk in it, when you turn to the right or when you turn to the left. When God lets you see their true colors, do not try to repaint them it's a clear sign that He does not want you to be with Him. When you are out of this situation, you'll look back and think that it's a good thing that you saw the red flags early. This way, you won't have a hard time closing that door because God already provided you with all the right reasons. A bad relationship is the devil's way of exploiting your vulnerability. God naturally wants to keep your heart pure by protecting you from the wrong people. He does this because He knows that it can be a struggle for us to follow His word when our hearts are swayed by affection and pleasure. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 3 declares, But the Lord is faithful. He will establish you and guard you against the evil one. Most importantly, He's keeping you safe because He'll need you to be fully prepared for the spouse He destined for you. I want you to take note that there are no missed opportunities in God. You aren't losing anything when you choose to turn your back on these relationships. The right one awaits you, and this is the only room God wants you to walk into.